What's up guys? It's Boo, Mile High Distilling. Today, we are just going to be talking about a simple, simple thing. How to set your hoses up through your Mile High still. This can transfer into other stills by other companies. Some it probably won't, uh, but for the most part, it's going to be a universal setup. We're going to be discussing pot stills, reflux stills, as well as our flute stills. So, regardless if you have a unit like this, a unit like this, or a unit like this, you can be covered. Uh, any unit you buy here from Mile High Distilling, when you get a pot and a tower combo in one of our actual still packages, you're gonna get hoses included. Those hoses are gonna be a pretty basic hose setup always. They consist of something known as PVC, Papa Victor Charlie tubing. That's a, a type of plastic. It's relatively tolerant in terms of chemical tolerance and doesn't really have that heat tolerance as much, but we're only running cold water through those lines, so it's gonna be sufficient for that purpose. Now aside from that, you're also going to get hose clamps so that they can hook in your hoses and keep them tight on your unit. And we do include some hose menders. Hose menders are designed to hook into usually a garden tap, a garden spigot on your, in your backyard, and uh, as a way to adapt the hose line to there. Those usually aren't used. Most customers plumb something in. After they get their unit, they'll go to the hardware store, get some maybe quick compression fittings for some better seals on those hoses. They might get a faucet adapter so they can uh, pull water from their sink rather than a tap outside. Different things like that. They might be getting just a submersible pump and creating a water recirculation chamber. So a lot of those times those menders aren't used, but we include them just as a, as a courtesy. So why not start with the easiest of the hose setups? That's a pot still mode. Now again, even though this is a specific tower on top of here, this is gonna be pretty universal. Any pot still you get from here or any dual purpose still you're trying to run in pot still mode, it's all gonna be the same configuration. So we'll get a close up of this unit so you can kind of see where my hoses are going, but the rule is pretty simple. Water is gonna come in from the bottom of a condenser and out the top. That's the same for any still. So whether you're running reflux condenser as well or not, it's going to be the same rules. Now for pot still mode, all you're going to need are two hoses like this. These are once again going to be included when you buy a tower and boiler combo from us, just a still. You also get hose clamps, just like that. And that's really all you need. Technically, it can be done by hand, but I always keep a few pieces with me. I have a little ratchet here with the right size bit for my uh, nub on my hose clamp. And the reason for that is this has a little wing nut here, thumb screw, and it can be thumbed, but I don't really like them. I don't feel like they get tight enough. So I actually rip mine off with a pair of needle nose pliers. I twist hard enough to where they pull off and I use this ratchet here and just kind of get down real tight. Setup is real easy. We're gonna slide this hose clamp over our hose then we're going to plug it in. This is our inlet side, remember. Make sure your hose is all the way through that nipple. And then we're gonna use our hose clamp to tighten down. I grab a pair of pliers and twist until the thumb comes off and I tighten down with a ratchet. So that's our inlet. And now it's just rinse and repeat on our outlet line. Hose all the way through, tighten down, and you're good. One word of advice I can give you guys is prior to running, check your connections. After everything's been installed for your hose setup, run that water. What I do is I get my still ready, I get it heated and starting to boil, and then as soon as that boil starts, just run your water, make sure that it goes all the way through the hoses and make sure that nothing's leaking. Um, that'll give you plenty of time while it's still heating up if something is leaking to fix, adjust. The point is, is when you actually start distilling, when everything is fully heated, you don't wanna find out then you have a leak because it definitely adds to the chaos, especially if you're not as used to running as others. For reflux hose setup, it's gonna be slightly different what we're doing here, the stock package we give you comes with three of those hoses I showed you and four of those hose clamps I just showed you. 
That'll create what's called a daisy chain setup. That's designed to pump the same water into both condensers, just have it be one solid flow line. That can be upgraded at a different point in time, and I'll show you the upgrade as well. But let's show you the stock setup. So same rules are gonna apply, where we're gonna attach a hose clamp to the end of one of our PVC tubing. And remember, water in from the bottom and out from the top. So this will be our water inlet, right like this. From there, how we create the daisy chain, we're gonna go from our water outlet on our final product condenser to the water inlet on our reflux condenser. And right there, that creates that loop. Water is gonna enter through here, fill up this tube, and then out, loop, and fill up this tube with water next. This is your reflux condenser. And then we're simply going to have our water outlet right here, which is going to drain. You can put the drain line you know, through a garden, uh, water your plants at the same time, put it into your tub, whatever you feel like doing with that. Now, as far as upgrades go for a reflux unit like this, there's one thing we can do. Let me tell you why you would want to upgrade. This condenser is our final product condenser. This is what helps condense all the hot alcohol vapors into a liquid. This needs to be cool at all times in order to properly condense everything back into a liquid. There's going to be vapors that are pushing up in this column and not all those vapors are pure. Some are heavier with impurities. And so this sort of takes all those lesser vapors, those less pure vapors and forces them to kind of drag back down into the still. It's kind of like a cloud when it has too much liquid in it. It's, that's when it starts to rain, it gets too heavy. In a way it's acting like that. Now this is great for high proof neutral spirit, but some people like to control the amount of reflux going into their still. This has to be cold at all times, but you might find situations where you don't want this completely cold because you're refluxing too much when that happens. So you can upgrade and install a device like this. Let me zoom in on this. Now what this is, is a ball valve. This brass piece is a ball valve. That's going to let us control the amount of water going in to our condenser. On the ends here, I have something known as a threaded hose barb. This is a 3 8 inch ball valve. Use 3 8 inch hose barbs and those will connect right to our hose lines. And then on the end, I have just a tiny nub of a hose with a hose clamp in the middle to hold on. Let me show you how this is installed. So rather than have this hose line going from the outlet of our final product condenser into the inlet of our reflux, we'll attach that hose into our device and it's going to look something like that. So now we can control the amount of water going into our reflux and not mess up our daisy chain flow in our condensing line, in our final product condensing. This is gonna stay as cold as it needs to be. And then as it loops and starts to hit into our reflux, remember they're chained together, you can slow or speed this valve up as much as you need to control the amount of water going in here. Our fluid is definitely going to need a little more cooling power than our regular smaller stills would need. These are really high power condensers. They're known as, this is called a deflamator. It's a tube and shell style condenser. And this is known as a shotgun condenser. Same thing, tube and shell. They require a lot more cooling and a little bit more precise. This is a very touchy condenser line. Small adjustments will mean big things with this condensing line. So having a proper cooling source is definitely going to be a must. We do sell a pretty basic hose package for this flute on our site, which is going to get the job done. It can be upgraded in the future with maybe some compression fittings or something else to get the job done a little bit better. But let me show you kind of what the flute hose kit would look like, and then you can adapt that whatever system you have, whatever you get for upgrades, it can be adapted. The flute hose package we sell are going to come with a few pieces. These are the hose menders I was talking about that are included in our hose packages that you may or may not use. Chances are you won't. You do get these hose clamps that probably look familiar to you. You get seven of these in the hose kit we sell. This is called a threaded hex nipple. What it does is we're going to be installing one end 
onto our condensers and it's going to leave the other end open for the ball valves that are going to be coming in our flute hose kit. And then these are hose barbs. All in all, the, real, the only real connection you're going to have to make between these parts is for the inlet of your condensers and that's what it's going to look like put together. Hex nipple on one side, this screws into the inlet on our condensing line. You're going to have your ball valve for control and then a hose barb on the end so you can attach a hose. On top of that, we also have a Y splitter, which is gonna split our connections. Now, I know there's a lot here, so let's go ahead and unpack what's going on. You're gonna see on our shotgun condenser and our deflimator, our inlets are looking the same. That figure, that connection I showed you with the threaded union, and then we have our ball valve and then our hose barb, that's what's going into our inlet. We wanna control only on our inlet side we don't care how much water is flowing through outwards. We just want to control the amount of water going in. So we're going to have hose barbs on this side. Now I do want to take a quick moment and also mention, this is the stock valve that comes with the flute hose kit, but I do highly recommend getting a needle valve. It's a higher precision valve with a flute. If you ever get it and you're trying to get to high proof neutral spirit, your needle valve is going to be able to control by the millimeter the amount of water going in. So it's really beneficial for those high proofs. Now, on the outlet side, you're seeing exactly the same as well. All we have here is a hose barb. So hose barb threads in the same way this hex union threads in, and then a hose line attaches. There'd be one other part that we need to focus on with our fluid hose kit, and that is connecting our inlets to one solid hose line. We use the Y splitter for that. This line and this line are two inlets and we plug them into the Y splitter like this. From there there's a fifth hose that's going to come with the flute hose kit when you get it from us and it attaches to the bottom of this Y splitter. Now we have an open-ended hose, and that's gonna go into whatever your water source of choosing is. Could be your submersible pump, could be some sort of faucet adapter that's connected to your faucet, but that's essentially it. Now we can split our inlet lines so that they're each getting their own dose of fresh water. And then our outlets, we don't really, again, care about splitting things up. It doesn't really matter. You're gonna have two drain lines right now, this hose is gonna be outputting water and so is this. So sometimes I do get a second Y splitter and hook my two outlets together and then I'll have one outlet line and I can drain wherever I feel like draining. So everybody, I hope any problems you were having with hoses, you don't have any more. As I had mentioned, this setup is pretty universal. So if you have a reflux unit from a different company, there's a good chance this will work. Our flutes are maybe a little bit unique. Any questions that you might have on host setups that weren't covered in this video, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll get you an answer for what you're looking for. With that, guys, before we leave, it's shot time, baby. I'm drinking a local favorite today. This is Spirit of the Rockies. They're in Pueblo, Colorado. Actually, I met the head distiller over there a few days ago, and he was kind enough to give me this bottle. And as you can see, I'm kind of enjoying it. Uh, so... If you are in Colorado, near Pueblo, or otherwise, please check them out. With that, my folks, drink with me. As well, guys, please, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Please subscribe to us. We've got future content coming out. I really want to see more comments as well, letting me know what you guys want to see on our channel. We actually had a, a video that's being released next week that our customer, one of our customers, actually recommended to do. And we had a blast doing it. It was so much fun. It was something really cool that I wouldn't have thought of in my own little closed mind. We love interacting with you guys. And the idea he had, I wouldn't have thought of, you know, I, I know what I know, but I don't always think outside the box with what you guys want to see, you know? So if there's certain videos, maybe there's certain distilling questions stumping you. Maybe there's a certain process that you're not getting and, and want to see it explained or shown. Please leave a comment and we can see what we can do, okay? As always, gentlemen and ladies, thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Take care, guys.